All right, so this video is gonna cover the outgoing invoices going out to your customer. And we're gonna have a look at setting up these claim stages and presetting those. We're gonna have a look at this refundable deposit and what that is. We're gonna have a look at the printed invoices and what they look like, both with and without variations attached. And lastly, we're gonna have a look at the invoice statement, which is a really handy way of uh, keeping your client up to speed on the different claims as they go through. Let's jump into it. So first things first, when I created this contract job, um, I had a tick box to say, do I want default stages or default invoices? And basically the ones, the six ones here, this is them. So they should mirror a Victorian master builders contract and it will be often quite similar for other states and other regions. Um, but do give it a check just to make sure it matches yours. And if you do need to change it for any reason, really, really easy to do, completely fine for you to go and delete some if you need to just make major changes. If you just wanna change a percent here and there, that's fine. Um, jump in to say the frame stage, change the percent. It'll tell you here what the maximum is so you can't go silly. And one really, really common mistake is people will come in and go, right, my frame stage is say 20%. And it goes, nah, it's gotta be under 15. And we get a support call asking, well, how do I make it 20? And the easy answer to this one is, all of these add to 100%, i.e. you cannot make it over 100 at any point. So you've gotta take percent off somewhere else before you can add it. So I would go and reduce the percent first off, say lockup, and push it onto frame if that's what I wanted to do. If you make your own defined uh, kind of invoice stages and you wanna save them, absolutely go for it. There's a preset button in here like a lot of other screens and this preset will save both the names of the invoices. It'll also save any comments on them. It'll save the order that they appear in and the percentage. So particularly if you maybe do one setup of invoices for renos and another setup for full builds, really good option to be able to save multiple presets. Before we go and actually issue any invoices, uh, I just wanna make quick mention to this refundable deposit. Now, it has a specific use and the main reason for pointing it out is just so it gets used at the right time. So a refundable deposit in our words is a deposit or a lump sum that you'll take up front and you'll later credit back um, over subsequent claims. If that doesn't sound like something you'll do, then just don't use it and go through your normal claims as per normal. This gets most use or we see it gets most used in uh, cost plus jobs and completion percent jobs, but uh, everyone works a bit differently at times, so it does get used all over the place. But as said, if it doesn't sound like something you'll use, just don't use it and just do the normal invoices as you normally would. Lovely, let's issue this deposit so I'm gonna go in and I can put comments in. I can include variations, which I will do later on. And it'll show all the dollar totals and how it's been calculated. And ultimately I'm just saying, yep, invoice that. At which point it pops up with a due date and you can change that to be what you need it to be. But when it's setting it up initially, you can just see this on the background here. There's a default days. Um, here that's across your whole account. So it's always gonna go off that initially. If you're happy with all the info, go down and go save and close and print it to have a look. As always, print preview. You can email it as well, which we'll show you in a sec. But uh, this is what the invoice looks like. Now it's gonna have customer information. Um, as mentioned earlier, I haven't put a huge amount in about myself as the customer. Um, but uh, all the information that you've put in, addresses and phone numbers goes in here. It will show claim amounts, what the claim is for, and you can get multiple lines here if you do add variations. The main things that we recommend to people when they're first setting this up, just to ensure that A, your details about yourself are correct, and B, that your payment terms are all good. So for example, I've gone and changed my default days to seven, i.e. seven business days isn't correct anymore, you might change this to just say invoice must be paid by due date and that will, that will cover all your bases, whatever you change it to. 
but the most common thing we see people change this around for is to add bank details, which makes heaps of sense because otherwise the customer will call and say, where do you want the money? Um, which is a lovely problem to have, but uh, it's easily avoidable too. I'll close this one off and I'll quickly show you where the editing for those payment terms are. So it's in this cog, manage payment terms, and this is across your whole account. So you go change it once and you're all good. And one other thing I wanna show you is just this email button, because when I pop it open, it's asking whether I wanna send just the invoice or the invoice and statement. So I'm gonna spend a moment just going through this statement because I think it's well worth covering and it gives a lot of information to your customer. You can print it on its own, which I'll do via this cog again, and you can email it on its own too. So what this is about, it's essentially a summary of the whole job. So all invoices, all variations will show in here. It'll show what they're kind of on the hook for invoice wise right now, how much I've received from them, how much is pending. And it's just an overall high level view. For, from the perspective of contract totals, um, it'll show the original and it'll show the variation total and the adjusted. So really just a good document to keep people in the loop. Lovely, so let's go to another variation, sorry, another invoice and add the variation. And there's gonna be two ways of showing you this, mainly because we get people do it in different ways. Just before I jump in, I'm gonna mark off that this has been paid as well, um, this deposit, which is something you will need to do. So we'll just say we've received the payment. It pops open always like this, just wanting to know how much, because generally you're gonna get the whole amount, but daily bank limits, um, or people hitting the wrong amount or all kinds of stuff will make it a part payment and you can manage those here. I'm just gonna say, yep, full amount. It'll say received, it'll record the payment and all good. So base stage here and I'm gonna go, yep, with this one, I'm going to, and this is possibly not the exact right time to be invoicing for a cooktop and down lights, but the example is still the same. You can grab them here and it'll add them to the invoice and you can see how it's done all the maths. It'll add, in this case, three lines to the invoice. Um, so we'll have one for the claim, one for the down lights, one for the cooktop. And when it goes to your accounting, which it will as soon as I invoice it, it will have multiple lines there as well. So that's one way of invoicing and getting the money sorted for your, for your variations. If you have negative variations, they really need to go against a claim like this so that we can say, yep, a total amount minus a variation amount. However, if they're positive, then you can do this second method as well, which is to say, hey, I didn't put it on this base. You can actually see here because there's no variation amount here. Instead, I'm gonna add a totally new invoice and just say, Claim amount, nothing. Percent of claim, of contract, nothing. This is to only about my variations and plus plus. And to confirm that you can see no contract value. So the reason you might wanna do this is, let's say there's a bank involved and you have the customer paying variations out of pocket and you just wanna keep it very separate. So this is a great way to, uh, to kind of tackle that problem. Lovely. Little subtle thing, I haven't really pointed this out too much. This bar will change color based on how much is wrapped up into this screen. And right now it's gone back to contract total. This is the adjusted contract total, i.e. the original plus the variations. And it's saying all of that amount is taken care of in this screen, i.e. you haven't missed anything. Keep an eye on this, green is good. Blue um, is everything else. So if it's ever not green, It'll say why, and generally it's because you've added a variation uh, and it hasn't been added to the invoices yet. It does also flag sometimes if you have been tinkering with this and you've made a mistake and you've ended up with these less than 100%. So do keep an eye on it. It's just a really good way to be sure you're invoicing for everything you're uh, supposed to be getting. And that's our invoicing. Mm -hmm.